As you see in your bulletins, the scripture reading for this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 22. And just as a reminder, of course, we are still within the season in the Christian calendar, the season known as Easter Tide, which actually started very early in the morning while it was still dark on Easter morning, the first resurrection day, and will continue until Pentecost, which is May 19th of this year. So we are continuing in this season of Pentecost, or of Easter Tide. Eastertide, jumping the gun. We're already planning Pentecost. Sorry. We are in this season of Eastertide, and so it is totally appropriate that we have landed on some of the post resurrection appearances of Christ when he appeared to his followers in his resurrected body. And so this is also our passage for today. So, children of God, let's hear God's word for us this morning. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, Jesus continued. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, I really don't get it. You see, it was shortly after Jesus had risen from the dead. Over some days, he appeared to his disciples a few different times in his resurrected, glorified body. And on this particular occasion, Jesus restored Simon Peter to full fellowship and service. As we just heard, just as Peter had denied Jesus three times, Jesus now gave him the chance to declare his faith three times. An opportunity to, to cancel out or rub out or expunge his denials, if you will, one by one by one. Do you love me? Jesus asked him. Three separate times. And Peter's answers were consistent. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. In our Lord's gracious forgiveness, he then gave Peter, in all of this, he gave Peter the chance to fade the memory of his threefold denial by a threefold declaration of love, a love which would ultimately lead Peter to suffer a martyr's death, as Jesus somberly predicted. When you are old, you will stretch out your hands, someone will dress you, and will lead you where you do not want to go. Now, we can't continue at this point, not yet, without noting that there's a detail here that we cannot overlook, and it's this. In the Greek language in which almost all of the New Testament was written, there's a little bit of Aramaic, but in the Greek language, when Jesus asked Peter, do you love me, he was really asking, do you love me with agape love, with self-sacrificing, selfless, deepest love, God's kind of love for humankind? You know, in the English language, we are so limited. 
um, I'm thinking of, we can talk about fondness or affection, uh, that we like someone. But when it comes to love, we just have that one word, love. In the Greek, it is so different. There are a handful of different words. One would be this agape love, self-sacrificing love, the love that God has for us, humankind. Then there's another kind of love, storge, which is family type of love. And then there's phileo, phileo, phileo which refers to a friendship type of love. Um, there are different words in the Greek, and we can't just skip over this and say, okay, Jesus asked three times, do you love me? There's a lot more than this here. For when Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? He was asking, do you love me with agape love? Selfless, self-sacrificing, deepest love, God's kind of love for us? But Peter's reply was, you know that I love you. And he used a different word there. He used the word phileo, which refers to friendship or fondness or a brotherly type of affection. Now, that word's not foreign to us, phileo. It's P-H-I-L-E-O. After all, we have the city of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. And Philadelphia, starting like phileo, Philadelphia is known as the city of what? Brotherly love. Sure. So when Jesus asked, do you love me with agape love? Peter said, I love you with a phileo type of love, a friendship, a brotherly type of affection. The first two times Jesus asked Peter if he had agape love for him. And Peter replied with phileo. But the third time. Jesus took and used Peter's lesser word for love, honoring where Peter was spiritually and accepting his honest answers in making commitment. Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Phileo? And Peter replied, you know that I do. This is so beautiful, how Jesus met Peter right where he was and still encouraging him to grow in the faith and in love. Beautiful. In addition, following each one of these three question and answer pairs, Jesus commissioned Peter for ministry and for leadership in the fledgling church. Feed my lambs, Jesus charged him. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. And then... Jesus once more issued the exact same call that he had given to Simon Peter about three years before, way back at the very beginning of Jesus' public ministry. Follow me, he said to Peter. But then, friends, this is what I simply don't get. But then, the very next thing we read, the very next words we read after this marvelous exchange between Jesus and Peter, this expulsion of, of Peter's sin and guilt, this commission for ministry and mission, the very next thing we read is Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. And my, my gut says, what? Peter, where is your head? What are you thinking? You just professed your love for the Lord, and when he called you to follow him, the first thing you did was turn around and focus on somebody else. When Peter turned and saw that this other disciple, we know this is John, who also wrote the gospel, John, one of the 12, the beloved disciple. When Peter turned and saw John, he asked Jesus, Lord, what about him? In other words, and what's going to happen to him? What's the plan for him? Part of me doesn't get that at all. Jesus called him to follow, and Peter started looking around. And on the other hand, I get it all too well. For we can find ourselves doing the exact same sort of thing today, can't we? We hear the Lord's invitation in our own lives. We hear him knocking at the doors of our hearts. We respond to that, we let him in, we, we accept him as our Savior and our Lord. We claim to love him, we claim to, to commit ourselves, our lives to him, be loyal to him. 
He calls us to follow him, and right away we take our eyes off of him. We turn and we start looking at everybody else to see how and what they are doing. We look at, we sometimes evaluate, we often compare, we can even criticize or judge others in their own faith walks. Now, we are supposed to be caring and encouraging of one another. We are to care, we are to help as we are able to build up each other in the faith. Yes, certainly but not to take our eyes off of Jesus in order to be nibby or nosy about somebody's else, somebody else's faith walk, not to criticize, not to judge in our comparisons, in our evaluations. Friends, such things should not be. The scripture passage continues. Jesus answered, whatever I want for John, what is that to you? You must follow me. The Amplified Bible paraphrases it, what concern is it of yours? The Common English Bible reads, what difference does that make to you? You must follow me. And likewise, Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, the message puts it, Jesus said, what's that to you? You, follow me. And so is Jesus also saying to me and to you right here and right now. Regardless of how I'm working in anyone else's life, no matter what I want to do in and through anybody else, not considering how faithfully anyone else is following me or not, totally apart from whether or not someone else who professes my name is living a godly life, you must follow me. I'm talking one-on-one -on -one here, I can hear Jesus say, even if no one else takes the same path, even if no one else chooses to obey, even if no one else follows, what is that to you? I'm calling you to follow me. No looking around, no excuses, and no turning back. Sisters and brothers, what will we decide this morning? Will we decide or decide again to follow Jesus? Let's pray. Dear Lord, as tough as it is for me to ask this, I pray that you won't let us forget this passage from your holy word. That you won't let us forget your words to the disciple Simon Peter. For they are also your words to us, to me, and to everyone else whose hearts are bowed before you right now. Ancient words ever true. Lord God, through your Holy Spirit, you preserved this story in your word for us to have it before us this day. And so we pray that you will continually bring it to mind for us. For each one of us needs ultimately and only to be concerned about our own relationship with you and not compare ourselves to others, not judge or evaluate others. Concerned about how closely and how well they are following, we must be concerned ultimately and only about how closely and how well we are following you in all that we think, in all that we say, and in all that we do. Help us to hear your call afresh and anew this morning. And help us to respond by following you more nearly and loving you more dearly, day by day moment by moment, to the glory of your precious name, amen.